to begin, may I take this opportunity to wish you good health and safety in the new year. And I hope you will join me to say thank you to many men and women from China who are in Hong Kong now helping us to fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we have four very distinguished speakers with us. May I make brief introduction of them in order of their speeches. The first speaker, Professor Shen Chen Chen, is a member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering. He is Dean of College of Civil and Transportation Engineering and Director of Underground College Academy, Shenzhen University. He is also Chairman of the Technology Committee of Shenzhen Metro Company Limited and Director of the branch of Shaft Construction, Central Coal, Mine, Central Coal Mining Research Institute based in Beijing. He graduated from Hainan College of Mining in 1982 and obtained a PhD from Tsinghua University with a distinguished PhD thesis. He is an expert in construction of underground space. His main interests are tunneling, underground engineering, geotechnical engineering and shaft construction, especially freezing technique, ground movement control technique and safe environment synergism technology for engineering work adjacent to subway structure. He is the author of nine monographs and more than 100 academic papers and has been awarded by the state three prizes of national scientific and technological progress. The second speaker, Professor Chunan Tang, is a chair professor of Cheung Kong Scholar Program, director of Deep Underground Research Center, Dalian University of Technology, and chief professor of structural geology, University of Geosciences. He was vice president of the Chinese Society of Rock Mechanics and Engineering and chairman of China National Group of International Society of Rock Mechanics. He obtained a PhD in Northeastern University and continued his postdoctoral work at Imperial College. He led several major research projects on rock mechanics and is the chief scientist for a national 973 program for fundamental research. He has published 300 papers and several books on rock mechanics and civil engineering. Recently, he has proposed a new conceptual model of elevated cities through construction of three layer space structures, human activity layer at the elevated, transportation layer on the surface and infrastructure layer underground. This new model can provide an effective solution for solving current urban syndrome, including traffic congestion, shortage of human living space and air pollution. The third speaker, Mr. Wilfred Lau, is the director of AROP, the Global Planning and Engineering Consultant. He is the fellow of the Institution of Civil Engineers UK, fellow of Hong Kong Institute of Engineers, and registered professional engineer of Hong Kong. He has over 40 years experience in leading large scale multidisciplinary planning and engineering projects in Asia. He has led Arab's consulting activities across East Asia for 15 years. He was a member of Arab East Asia Region Board, Chief Executive of Arab Vietnam from 2008 to 2017 an Arab global transport planning leader from 2001 to 2016. Mr. Lau was a chairman of the Association of Consulting Engineers of Hong Kong. He was involved with major property development in Canada and large scale infrastructural development in China. In recent years, Mr. Lau focuses on development of cities 
and new towns in Asia, advising governments on future generation of cities. He developed the smart green resilient urban planning philosophy and is author of the book, Smart Green Resilient. The last but not the least speaker, Mr. Freddie High, graduated from the University College London and is professionally qualified in both Hong Kong and the UK. He returned to the Rocco Design Architects Associates Limited in 2007 and became a director in 2018. He has since been project team leader for a number of high profile projects, such as the Hong Kong Palace Museum, Kerry Hotel Hong Kong, and China Unicom Global Center. His past experience includes number one Peking Row, the IFC, and several stations along the West Rail. He is also active in the local architectural and institute matters and has been appointed for several committee posts by the government. Now about the organizers. The Research Institute of Land and Space at PolyU was set up in 2021 with three missions. First, to resolve land shortage problem through multidisciplinary research to transfer knowledge by collaborating with industry and government, to make positive impacts on future land supply policies. It draws expertise from five poly youth faculties and schools, a strong multidisciplinary team consisting of over 30 core members has been formed collaborating with researchers around the world. It is also cooperating with the government and industry to create innovative solutions of creating affordable and environmentally friendly land and space. The following are some examples of current research. New methods for land reclamation. Innovative approaches for creating land and space. Investigation of impacts of land development on the environment. Land economics and planning. And land analytics and management. Now the other co-organizer, the Green Deck Project Management Office was set up in 2019 to carry out the Green Deck study and to promote the project. As you know, city is one of the largest and most complex form of human settlement. Following a trend in urbanization, some cities are getting larger and more complex than ever before. To support urban growth, the creation of more and better urban space has become an important issue. Many of these cities are in Asia. Hong Kong is one of them, and the Green Deck is an urban space, a case at point which I would like to share with you. In 1949, the Green Deck site was still underwater on the seabed. Reinventing it as an urban space first took place in early 1960s, when the surrounding land were reclaimed from the sea to become land. During the next several decades, the new land was occupied by all kinds of uses, residential, commercial, transportation, educational, etc bringing in a lot of people and cars. Normally, when this happens, it would create a lot of activities, social, economic, recreational, educational, and so on. 
if these activities were well planned and managed, they would create synergies among themselves and the place would become very vibrant. If not, it would create big problems. Unfortunately, it was a latter that has happened on the Green Deck site. This is today's Green Deck site with three major urban facilities next to each other. The Hongham Cross Harbor Tunnel, the Hongham MTR station and the Poly U campus. The tunnel brings in 120,000 cars per day, also bringing air pollution, dust and noise. The MTR station serves about 250,000 commuters per day, together with 80,000 bus commuters, 35,000 students at Poly U, and another 15,000 people living, working in this neighborhood. There would be about 400,000 people engaging in all kinds of activities or moving through this area on a daily basis. However, all the ground space has been taken up by roads and rails. Pedestrians are forced to use two narrow footbridges over the toll plaza. The environment is extremely unfriendly to pedestrians. For example, you can see the harbor, but it is very difficult to walk there. These are the problems that is, is now happening uh, on the Green Deck site. In 2014, Hollywood decided to carry out a preliminary study trying to resolve this complex problem. It was found that the Green Deck to be constructed over the Cross Harbor Tunnel toll plaza may be the answer to all these problems. A proposal to reinvent the Green Deck site for the second time was then formulated. The proposal was introduced to the society and has received very positive responses from a wide spectrum of our community, including the professional and green groups, local communities, district council, and the government. On the left-hand side, it was the plan composed in 1914. And on the left is a, uh, a, a study that we are now handling. In 2020, funded by a Hong Kong Jockey Club Charity Trust Grant, an in-depth project development study was launched to identify and resolve all foreseeable technical issues relating to the implementation of the Green Deck, and four objectives were laid down for the project to fulfill. This is the project. Uh, now we are studying. The four objectives include to improve the air quality and uphold community health, to rebuild community connectivity by traffic separation, to satisfy social needs, and to revitalize old urban center and upgrade local economy. The green deck would consist of three levels. This is the ground level. The ground level would be used by cross harbor traffic, much like today. Indoor bus waiting lounges would be built so that bus com commuters would wait in a clean and comfortable environment not affected by car exhaust. Polluted air would be collected and pollutants removed before the air is released back to the atmosphere. Um, the lower uh, images are the impression done by artists or the future uh, bus waiting lounges. This is the entrance to the green deck uh, leading to the uh, Cross Harbor Tunnel. That is uh, the interior of the bus waiting lounges. The intermediate level would consist of an indoor separate pedestrian concourse connecting to all neighboring developments to facilitate pedestrian movement freely among all nearby neighborhoods. There will also be all kinds of community space, convenience stores, cafe, etc., to satisfy a variety of social needs.
the top level would be largely be used for an urban park so as to alleviate the great shortage in green open space in this part of the city, frequented daily by tens of thousands of people. So basically, the top level would be an urban park. That's a view from the air. And um, an oval building in the middle of the park become the highlight. On a macro level, the green deck would strengthen a cultural and arts facility network in South Kowloon, synergizing activities of individual facilities. It would also outreach from inland neighborhoods to the harbor front, bringing the communities to the harbor and vice versa. There are currently major public policies to improve the urban environment in many parts of Kowloon, except the neighborhood around the Green Deck. To implement this project would help to fill in the gap since the Green Deck would work as a catalyst to bring about urban regeneration in the surrounding neighborhoods. It is hoped that one day the dream of turning gray to green could be realized. Um, we hope one day the green deck will become um, a park, park on the, on the deck. Thank you very much. <laughs>